It's hardly surprising that Hall Lane, Allen's Lane and Mouse Hill are hotspots for ghostly miners. When you consider the history of this area, you will understand why ghostly miners cannot rest in peace. Way back in the history of Pelsall, Hall Lane was a place feared by many and not a place to be at night. These fears and superstitions go far further back than the 19th century. When Hall Lane was home to a handful of houses, Pelsall Hall Colliery, a cemetery and the church. Although I have never been able to ascertain exactly why Hall Lane was so feared, there is certainly plenty of evidence to suggest that it was. Superstition was taken so seriously in the 1800s when Pelsall Hall Colliery was a workplace for many. It was not unusual for a miner to turn back home rather than ignore a bad omen along Hall Lane. And this was a time when no work meant no money. Readers who scoff at such superstitions must consider this account which was told by one of my elder readers back in 2004. Mrs S told me that when her grandfather was killed down the pit his son vowed never to work on the anniversary of his father's death because it was considered to be a bad omen. However, on one occasion after a drink with his workmates he threw caution to the wind and decided to go into work. That day he was killed in a pit accident. Such fears and superstitions continued well into the 20th century. On Thursday 14th of November 1872, Pelsall Hall Colliery experienced the worst mining disaster in the history of South Staffordshire coalfields. 22 men died due to drowning or choke damp after previous and unknown workings were broken into. After days of pumping gallons of water from the mines and allowing poisonous gases to escape, rescuers were finally able to enter the mine to locate and retrieve the dead miners. On Tuesday, the upper part of a pair of trousers was washed up. After a cursory examination, this was about to be thrown aside. However, another person looked at it and discovered that it contained a watch, which was much battered and bruised. The watch was worn by young Thomas Starkey, who was 18 at the time of the inundation. After seeing the watch, Mr Bramhill searched the water channel and made the gruesome discovery of three fingers of a man's hand. It was ascertained that Thomas must have been driven by the flood into the bottom of the pumping shaft. The pumps were immediately stopped. The body was soon found in the sump in about seven feet of water and then swiftly brought to the bank. As he continued to search, Mr J Starkey, one of the proprietors, discovered the body of Michael Cash the man who he said to have tapped into unknown workings. Michael was lying face downwards near to one of the horses about 55 yards from the pit bottom. He was partially dressed. His flannel was slung over his right arm and his tools were beside him. His feet were entangled in the horse's tackle and his arm was around one of the trees. As if while struggling to get through he had been taken over by the rush of water. After discovering Michael Cash, the explorers continued and reached the stable in another part of the pit. And there they found carcasses of two horses and the body of the youth, Thomas Coleman, who was hanging by his middle across one of the bars dividing the stalls. The body was taken to the surface and like the others, removed to the station inn. Exploration then continued in a desperate search for the other men. Finally, on the following Thursday, after entering the crop of shallow 
About 80 yards away from Cash's heading, 18 bodies were discovered in a rather macabre scene. Ten of the men were lying together. Three were crowded in a tub and four in another. As if they had crowded together for warmth, old Mr Starkey's body was farthest away, with one of his legs resting upon the edge of one of the tubs. All were dressed, their clothes were dry, and at first sight they presented the appearance not of sad men, but of placidly sleeping men taking their rest. One of the men was kneeling, with his head bowed as though engaged in prayer, as though he had called a silent blessing down upon the sleeping men. His dead hands were laid upon the shoulders of another, who lay below him in the truck. One of the boys was said to look like an angel, having a smile on his face. Closer examination afterwards showed that the faces of some of the men were swollen and had apparently been bleeding, but no one knew why. Despite the other miners being found, one miner remained missing. This was reported by local press for weeks and weeks as explorers tried to find the missing miner. As time went on, it was reported that there appeared to be a reluctance to find the missing miner, which may have been due to superstition at the time. Despite the pit being reopened soon after the disaster, the missing man remained unfound. There has always been confusion as to who the missing miner was, as he was listed as Miner 22 Unknown and Not Found on the Mining Inspectorate of 1873. Some newspaper reports of the day said his name was William Richards, and others said that he was the 13-year-old American Samoan known as Stephen Lawton. However, to this day, whoever he was, he does still make his presence felt. Perhaps a cry for help from beyond the grave because he was the only one left behind. It has been reported for decades that some inhabitants of Allen's Lane, Pelsell, past and present, particularly at the Mouse Hill end of the road, experience poltergeist activity on the anniversary of Pelsell Hall colliery disaster. These disturbances have always been attributed to the missing miner, it has also long been recorded and documented that on the very odd occasion a group of ghostly Victorian miners can be seen ascending Mouse Hill. It could be said that these ghostly miners were connected to the 1872 disaster. However, these ghosts could be connected to a disaster which took place further back in time. In addition to the well-known 1872 disaster, one of my readers recalled being told by her grandmother that 60 men were swept to their deaths with slurry beneath the fields at the bottom of Mouse Hill, following a flooding of the mines. There was clear evidence in 1872 of previous pit workings at Pelsall Hall Colliery when they were broken into by Michael Cash. Based on what Mrs S was told by her grandmother, it is an enticing thought to suggest that it was the flooding of these old workings which may have resulted in the deaths of the sixty men. A previous disaster worse or equal to the 1872 Pelsall Hall colliery disaster. According to available documentary evidence, Pelsall Hall Colliery was owned and being worked in 1842. However, there are no records of previous disasters at Pelsall Hall Colliery. Before 1850, there was no systematic recording of mining deaths. Before 1852, there are no official lists of mining accidents or deaths. Since Pelsall was an isolated village at the time, this may account for why such information would have been passed on by word of mouth rather than appearing in the local newspapers at the time. 
Since these bodies were never recovered and remain beneath this field, it is believed that the ghostly miners who walk up Mouse Hill are these men trying to find their way home.